didn't one change their camera system over and over and over again and still make it viable to be a professional photographer? And the question is, what's the ultimate camera? Well, if you're interested to learn my journey, stay tuned. Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Demetrius. I'm here from OB Pixel and my brand today, obphoto.com. I wanted to give you a little bit of a rundown of my background history with regards to photography and media creation and at the same time also give you my roadmap and my journey that I've taken in terms of moving from one camera manufacturer to another and why I've landed up with the ultimate system. As you've seen from the thumbnail, yes, I have shifted over to Leica, but why? Well, let me explain. I've moved from one system to another for the last roughly 10 years, but I've, hold, I've had a camera in my hand for the last 40 because I started photographing with a camera at the age of 10 when I was really young. I'm now 50. <clears throat> so I've been holding a camera a long time and I know what cameras work and what cameras don't. But the last 10 years have been really interesting as a journey. I've been trying to harness my photography skills and I, th I think I've done a pretty good job. I worked with a number of projects. I've done a lot of uh, photography shows. I've done a lot of uh, portrait shoots. I've done a lot of landscape shooting. I've done a lot of product photography. And I have worked with a number of companies when it comes to their corporate photography as well for many years. And again, this is not my career. This is my hobby, even though it turned out to be another one of my careers. So I do take it quite seriously. <clears throat> and I am a, an exceptionally technical person. In my one career, I'm an information security professional, penetration tester, digital forensics professional. Um, I course creator, course instructor, and I'm also a consultant in the field in IT and information security. But that's the one side of the career. So I'm highly technical, I understand technology really well. And I have been in technology for 37 of those years out of those 40 years the last 40 years and I also understand creativity because I'm also a creative digital photographer I'm a media creative I can create pretty much any design I uh, write and uh, illustrate books and um, especially for kids and I'm reasonably creative so I understand the creative side with photography though it's the, it's, it's one of my passions and it's because my mother was a professional photographer all her life and she taught me everything and I have been through these systems before. I've been from the Olympus system, which is the OM-1. I went from that, to which had great lenses, and it's a great micro four-thirds system. I then moved over to the Panasonic GH-35, the GH-4, the GH-5, the GH-6. Phenomenal video cameras, and I still use a Panasonic today for video. I then moved over to the Fuji system, which is an undoubtedly beautifully gorgeously designed system and it's a great system to work with so I went from the X-T2 to the X-T3 X-T3 to the X-T4 X-T4 I didn't like so much and X-T5 I'm not entirely pleased with it but it's better than the X-T4 and then I moved over obviously to the GFX system which is a medium format and I loved my GFX 50S it was an unbelievably beautiful camera especially for portraits from there I moved over to Nikon or Nikon, and basically I moved over to the D500, then I went to the D850, then from there I went to the D810 as well, I had a D810, those are the DSLRs, and then I moved over to the micro four, uh, the um, mirrorless system, and then I moved to the Z6 and Z7, and the Z7 was phenomenal. I haven't uh, had my hands on the Z8, but I have worked with the Z9 before, and it's fantastic, but at the end of the day, camera systems were phenomenal, I think, I think Nikon makes exceptionally good lenses, and in my opinion, they're better than Canon lenses because they're smaller and they just do what they need to do. Even though they say they're 1.8 lenses, they're not really. The f1.8s so are actually f1.4s if you really calculate the science behind them. And um, I, I, loved, I love the Nikon system. I think, I think every single one of those systems has its majors and its flaws. And I'll get to those after this after this explanation. Then I moved from that to the Canon system. I, I, I've been going back and forward between Canon for many years, including video, and I've, I've worked with so many Canon cameras that I, it's, there's too many to explain. But the recent one that I worked with was one of my favorite cameras ever made. Uh, the two recent ones, the 1DX Mark II, which I had for a long time. One of the best DSLRs, in my opinion, probably the best DSLR ever made. 
And I then moved over to the mirrorless equivalent, which I guess at that time was the Canon R3. And I've had that for two years now. And Canon R3 has been an incredible camera. And I've used the ultimate lenses for them, which is the 28 millimeter to 70, which is an F2 wonder dream of a lens. And I don't think that combination can ever be beaten in cameras, but the lens was monstrous, okay? And of course it's an F2. And then I moved from that to the, uh, obviously, so then I had the 70 to 200, which is a tiny little lens, phenomenal little zoom lens. I mean, it's like a prime lens. And I've had those, those lenses and that camera for a while now. And Canon has taken me through many photography shoots, wedding shoots, sports shooting, events, that kind of thing. But they were, it's an exceptionally heavy system. And uh, let's face it, Canon has taken a very different take and look at the industry. And they now have become, I guess, the bully in the industry. Um, they have completely block third party manufacturers from making lenses for them the RF mount which I think is a disaster move for Canon and I think it's a, a pretty large mistake and I think Canon's going to suffer from it especially now that Nikon has partnered up with Red and basically they purchased Red which is a, a phenomenal deal for for Nikon and Red because I think the synergy between those two cameras is going to open up a brand new revolution in photography and videography and I think it's a master stroke of genius from Nikon to do this because they were really lagging behind in the video and it's a stroke of genius from Red because they don't have the market like Nikon has so they they can enter new markets and can you imagine the mirrorless cameras that will be coming down the pipeline if they can strike this deal correctly and amalgamate those two companies really well I think this will be the future of photography and videography and Canon really has messed up here they really have messed up and then recently I the, the, this is these are the two reasons why I decided to move away from Canon as much as I love the system and I love the camera system and I love their menu and I love their tilting screens and pretty much their camera systems like the R3 is it's an unbelievable un, unbeatable combination of of gear with the 28 to 70 millimeter lenses and pretty much all their lenses and here's the two reasons. Recently, Canon, one of their directors or CEOs, whatever they were in, in, in overseas, basically went online and spoke to some in, some reporter, some investigator, I mean, some journalist, my, my bad. And um, what came out of that was that Canon has purposefully blocked all third-party uh, manufacturers from making the RF mount lenses or any third-party lenses for them. And they will not allow any partnership in the future if they do, it'll be on a case-by-case -case basis, which means lens-by-lens -lens basis, which makes absolutely no sense. It makes no business sense. And it's actually, in my opinion, because I've been in, I've been in cam with cameras for 40 years now, and I think it's a dr dramatically wrong mistake. It's, a, it's such a bad mistake that it's going to open the doors for Sony, and it's going to open the doors for Nikon to just take over the industry. And Canon, you, you are, again, a bunch of idiots. I know why you're doing this because you're trying to protect your RF mount and you're trying to keep the quality of your RF mount, but it doesn't doesn't work because you've got Tamron and Sigma who make incredible lenses and you could have allowed them to work with you to get this thing done and have third party lenses and there you would flourish as a system, but you're going to fail now because you have closed off your system and closing off the system means that you've got your own lenses to deal with, but your lenses are as great as they are and they are incredible lenses. They're too big. They're too expensive and they're not as transportable and as useful as the smaller lenses from every single other manufacturer. And I think you've got to have a major competition with Canon, with the Nikon and, and Sony, especially Sony. And Sony's going to catch on this. They're going to take this opportunity and they're going to take you out the water because Sony's got more money than Canon. Okay. It's a plain and simple thing. It's a money game. And Canon, you made a mistake. And it's going to be, it's going to cost you. It's going to truly cost you. And because of that, that's one of the reasons why I moved away from you. Not only did I do that, I actually canon, canceled my Canon diamond status that I had with my Canon gear. The only thing I've kept with Canon is my Canon P1000 printer, which I have to still admit it's one of the best printers I've ever used. So Canon, make up with the industry. Shape up. Do something. Because you're going to make a major mistake down the pipeline. 
And that brings me to the second reason why I moved away. Well, the second reason is very simple. I recently have managed to have an accident and burn my hand, which I'm not going to show you, but it's pretty burnt like that. And luckily, I didn't burn the nerve endings on my hand. And it's been a month now, which I never thought I would recover this quickly, but it's been a month since I've had this problem. I haven't been able to actually pick up a camera very easily for a month because I usually hold the camera with my right hand and I support it with the left. Okay, so I usually hold like that and I support it with my left, which is burnt at the moment. And um, for a month, I haven't been able to do any photography, which really blew my mind because I lost a lot of work. And um, also at the same time, I've been really wanting to limit my gear down. So that's the second reason really why I've moved away from Canon because, you know, Canon cameras and lenses are fantastic. Okay, don't get me wrong, Canon. You are, you're a great company, but your products are too big. They're too large, okay? The industry is changing. People are shooting with smaller gear. People are using videography more. They're going to need to put things on, on, on gimbals and that. You need to reduce the size of your cameras. But don't go too small, okay? Don't, go to, don't do what Sony's done and don't do what Fuji's done. Keep it smaller, but not too small. Canon R3 was fantastically light, I give you credit for that, but it's still too large as a camera. You can do better, right? The camera system needed a better battery system. You could have done a better job and got rid of half the size, okay? And you know that, because you've seen it in your other Canon, your other Canon cameras like the R6, R10, and so on. Now, that was my, my, my other reason. My last reason is very simple. I've been in photography for a long time, and as a media creative, we go through peaks and troughs. Troughs, sorry peaks and troughs and I have wanted a system since I started and I've never been able to get it because I've never had the opportunity to and, I, and again I've tried pretty much all the systems and my, there are other systems that I haven't mentioned like hustle blood which I have used in the industry and there are other systems like um, not the Olympus but there was one other one and I forget now what it's called um, but I have used pretty much all the camera systems out there as in manufacturers, but this one I haven't. And when I came across it during one of my shoots, I was blown away. And not only blown away by its capabilities, but blown away by the size, versatility, capability, just the sheer quality of the photography, the ability to take photos in the sense that the camera, the, that, that the way it takes the photographs and the lenses that the way they take the photographs, essentially, the sensors, remind me of the old days where we had film photography, but incredibly capable lenses, which outstripped today's lenses with the exception of when it comes to sharpness. And the quality of this camera system, and just in general, the ability to take photos that are so close to the medium format, in fact, some cases it supersedes medium format, yet in a small miniature package, blew me out the water. Not only now can I carry this gear pretty much anywhere I can be, and it's my camera where I can carry everywhere, but at the same time, I've pretty much replaced three different lenses. I don't need to worry about quality. I don't need to worry about size. I don't need to worry about video issues. I don't need to worry about pretty much almost everything. This this was what I call a 99 percentile camera. The Leica Q3. Okay. I have a Leica Q3 in my hands. This is what I use today. I am now officially a Leica user. And um, this, uh, yes, and don't worry about the, the vinyl that I've put on, on top of the camera. This is just to protect my camera. And of course, I've used a vinyl that is going to be, it's, it's pretty cool as a, as a covering system. It is quite a technical type of vinyl. It, I mean, I'm a technology guy, right? I'm an IT guy, so I like technology. And I've managed to find a very cool vinyl. I don't know if you can see from the lighting that looks like circuit diagrams and I just think that's just incredibly cool and the Leica Q system with this Sumilux f1.7 28 millimeter which usually goes for you know 10 grand on its own 
not the perfect lens that's out there that's de you know detachable i mean that lens is incredible that that should be worth 20 grand but it is so close to that particular sumilux lens that is detachable on other cameras like of course the sl2 and sl3s and the m m uh, the m11s um that this lens as well instead of going for the m11 uh Forget me, forgive me if I get these numbers and this this nomenclature wrong because I'm still getting used to Leica systems. But I know the SL2 and the SL3 I've used the detachable lenses. Yes, they're wonderful, and the O mount lens is fantastic as a as a mount. But when I use the Sumilux as a detachable lens, and then I use this lens that is actually attached to this camera, this Leica Q camera, it was so close to that original lens that was made in the 1970s that it just blew my mind. And I'm not joking with you this is an incredibly powerful piece of gear and I don't need anything else so this is what I've done which is crazy again but I got to use the Leica system at a show once an exhibition show and then I had the fortune of using it in a photo shoot. We're very quick photo shoot. It was about an hour. And what I was able to do with this little gear, this piece of hardware that I have in my hand, which is an unbelievable piece of hardware. It's like a Q3. Gave me the same results that I was getting in the GFX 100S medium format from Fuji. Just about. A 60 megapixel sensor Yes, it's a 60 megapixel sensor. And I noticed in the Z7 of Nikon that it gave me additional noise. I noticed that in the Canon R, the, the, the Canon 1DX Mark II, and in pretty much all the other Canon cameras that have very high megapixels, like the R5, the Canon R5, had, you know, has great megapixels, huge amount of megapixels, but it introduces incredibly annoying noise in the images. And you can always work that out in software, but I'm a very big proponent of not using post-production software. I don't like using it. I like doing everything in camera if I can. It's not always possible. It's not always possible because you do have certain customer requirements and sometimes they need some of the photography a little bit more cropped, a little bit more souped up in saturation, a bit of hue, a bit of, you know, uh, um, exposure and a bit of shadows and highlights. But, you know, I try not to touch my images as much as possible. But with this camera, I have now had this camera for one week and what can I say I have not needed to do anything to my photos at all in fact I haven't opened up Lightroom Adobe Lightroom I haven't opened up Adobe Photoshop I haven't opened up my most favorite application that I use for editing photos and that is Radiant Photo and a Radiant Photo video is coming out soon which blows my mind as a piece of software when it comes to artificial intelligence and then photo editing which is nothing can beat radio radiant photo nothing photoshop is great because it's exceptionally powerful yes it can go deep into your photography and really make you really intricately change images but if you're not that kind of person you just want to have quick changes in and out get your photography out to your customer and you just don't care about doing major edits because you know that your camera and your lens have created something that is so amazing that you don't need to edit your photos that much. That is Radiant Photo. And when I put photos, when I take photos with these things, with this Leica Q3, this Leica Q3 system has made me fall in love with photography again. It made me fall in love with photography again. It made me just enjoy photography again, like I did with the Fuji system. But at the same time, it's given me the quality that I've never seen before. And the quality, when I say to you quality, you can zoom into 400% and not see any noise. And I've never been able to do that with no camera, including the GFX 100S, which is 100 megapixels. And a medium format, which is double the size of this format effectively in fact the only camera that i've ever seen that can compete against something like this is the hustleblood which fair enough it can but the hustleblood doesn't do 15 frames a second at 16 bit the hustleblood doesn't do 8k video 
right? None of the other cameras can pull off what this can do in one more one small package. And I don't need to carry additional lenses. And here's the best part. It does macro. It has autofocus, manual focus, and it has a dual focusing system. It has a hybrid phase detect. And I forget what the other focusing system is, but it's depth of field like we do in Panasonic. It's the same thing, but it has both. So the one deals with the speed and the other one deals with the, the, the acquisition and the quality and the stabilization and everything else that goes with it. And I cannot miss a photo with this. I cannot miss a shot with this. And now the best part about this camera system, this Leica camera system is that it gets out of my way. Because as a photographer, a professional photographer, once you learn how to use one camera system, you can pretty much use anything else. And if you can't, you're not a photographer. All right? Because the basics have never changed. Since the beginning of time, when we started with cameras, over 100 years ago, the basic usage of a camera has been the same. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Okay? And... This camera does it in, sp in buckets and spades, not just spades, because you've got your shutter speed at the top dial, which is exactly what Fuji does, which is phenomenal. You have your aperture on your lens, and you have your ISO on the side here, and it's so quick to use, because I don't need to go into any menu system at all. This doesn't need to go into any menu system whatsoever. It's, it's a phenomenally well-designed camera. Like, when I say to you well-designed, I mean, I, I'm blown away. And how did I manage to get my hands on a Leica Q3, which is out of stock globally around the world? Well, I've been in a Q for the last two years. Well, roughly a year and a half, basically. And I had a retailer, which is Park Cameras in the UK, call me up and say, by the way, we've had a person cancel the Leica Q3, do you want it? And I said, I'll take it right now. Because I've been waiting for this camera for a long time. And I'm glad I waited. And what I've officially done is, yes, this camera is $6,000. Yes, it is. It's a very expensive camera for what, you know, for the size of the camera. But I think this should be worth 10 grand. What this camera can do and what it's able to do in a small size where I don't have to carry anything. I just literally carry this, my spare battery and a couple of SD cards. And that's it. And I go out shooting and I can beat pretty much every photo that I've ever taken with every single other system in my entire life that I've taken with this little midget, this little tiny miniature little mini little camera system. Yes, I've put it a nice little grip underneath because I, there's a couple of things that are not great with this camera. And don't get me wrong, I'm not going to just blow the trumpet of like and say they're the 100% camera. They're the 100% best camera because they're not. Okay. I can tell you the three things that I believe are truly missing in this camera. And I think the Leica Q4 is going to destroy cameras in the industry. If Leica and Leica, this is a call out to you. If Leica does these three things, they will dominate the industry because they're already dominating with image quality with us. This beats pretty much everything I've ever seen in terms of image quality. The, the, the GFX 100S from Fuji and the Hasselblad medium formats are the closest things I've seen to this. Even the Sony doesn't come close to this. Sony has got terrible color science, okay? Canon's color science is incredible, but the problem with Canon is they're very large systems, so it doesn't help us. The ultimate camera system that does incredible skin tonality is Nikon. And I give Nikon credit for that because they've, they've got incredible skin, skin tonality. The best systems in the world for videography. You can't beat Panasonic cameras. Panasonic have got all the possible features you can think of to be a videographer. So you can't beat them when it comes to video, especially with a codex. Fuji have got the most fun cameras I've ever seen when it comes to using them. And they've got a very beautiful hybrid system like the, the X-T system. Olympus and Panasonic in terms of the camera, photography cameras, I've got very nice small cameras to work with. The mirrorless cameras are incredible. And the lenses, I mean, they're Leica lenses, okay? Now you take all those manufacturers and take Sony's, manu Sony's capabilities with technology, take it and put it into this. You take all those manufacturers, you put them together and you squeeze the heck out of this package and you come up with this. The Leica Q3 system is I've never seen a system like this. 
and I'm blown away by the photography. So what did I do? Not only did I pick up this camera last minute, I say last minute because it was a cancellation, like I've said, but I've also got rid of every single one of my other cameras and lenses. And I can tell you what I had. I had the Fuji X-T5. I've had in my, in my camera gear plus the 16 millimeter from Fuji, which is untouchable as a, as a lens. I had in my arsenal of gear that I've sold off to basically counter the balance this this camera that I've purchased, which is a, <laughs> not exactly a cheap camera system, okay? But at the same time, put money in my pocket, okay? Because I don't need to worry about anything else. I could just use this camera system to do everything. Then I sold my Nikon Z7 lenses that I had. I originally sold my, my camera a while back. I sold all those Z lenses. I had five of them. Then I sold all my Canon lenses that I've had for the last 20 years. Sold a whole lot. Not interested in Canon anymore. If Canon doesn't budge, if they don't move up the scale and change the way they're thinking and don't open up their mount to third-party manufacturers, I don't want to work with you because that's just greedy and that doesn't work for me. Professional photographers need a, a wide range of everything they can think of to do their job, right? And you're closing that off, Canon. So that's a mistake. So that's why I sold all my lenses. I'm still keeping my, my vintage lenses for Canon because I know I can use them in this system. But I'm going to use them in a different system altogether. I sold the Canon R3. I sold the 70, the 28 to 70. I sold the 70 to 200. I sold my 400 millimeters. Or I think it was 400. I can't remember now. I have got rid of my Olympus gear. So I had a lot of gear along the way, and I got and actually got rid of the FX30 and the FX3. I'd sold a long time ago because I'm not a studio and making movies for Netflix. I don't need an FX3, but I had the FX30 and I was using it for videography. And um, yeah, that's gone too. And I pretty much got back my 20 grand that I have spent in the last 10 years when it comes to photography. And I spent six grand, 6,000 pounds roughly for this product. And yes, it's a lot of money because I, don't, I didn't just buy the camera. I got the grip when it comes to the magnetic the magnetic um, charging, um, which is great. It works, but it's not my entirely favorite uh, grip because at the bottom is actually going to close off. It's going to close off the battery and the, the, the SD card slot. I got the obviously magnetic pad, which I can't show you because it's busy plugged in. And now I have in my pocket 14 grand out of the entire, all the, all the sale. Plus I have the ultimate system in my hands and I can pretty much take on pretty much any other photographer with every kind of shooting they have, with the exception of maybe, you know, Olympics photography. And, um, I, I souped it up a little bit. I basically gave it a little bit of a thumb grip as well from Leica, the original thumb sort of uh, little grip thing. I changed the lens cap in the front because I like silver in the front because I think it just works well as a silver. I put a bit of vinyl on it so I can protect it. And um, also, more importantly, I have got that 14K in my bank so that I can actually use that as a separate purchase, which I'm going to be going on towards the Nikon system when I see that Nikon and Red produce something different together. But at the same time now, I got rid of pretty much all my gear and Canon's out the picture. So that's my story behind everything. And I've had my first photo shoot yesterday with the Leica Q3. I did a very short wedding for a couple, a friend of mine that wanted last minute wedding because he wanted to do a, a crazy sort of last minute wedding because unfortunately it's a bit of a sad situation. His bride has only got one year to live and he wanted to marry her before she leaves and he calls me up and he goes Zach do you want to help me out please this is a scenario and I dropped everything and I went and I have luckily in my hands I had the Leica Q3 because it arrived a week ago and I said to him I'll be there and I said to, and he says to me, can you just take a couple of photos? And I said, oh, well, I'll do the real, real shoot for you. And I'm not going to show you the photos because it's their photos to show. But I can tell you one thing. 
I didn't need to edit any of my photos. I didn't need to crop. I didn't need to edit anything. I didn't open up Photoshop. I touched none of them. That's never happened to me in the history of my photography. Never. I managed to turn around these photos to him within two hours after the wedding. The only thing I did with the photographs is that I did add them into a, uh, a USB device plus a CD. I made a quick little video with all the photos. I took all the photos and I put them into a nice little simple little videography type of introduction thing to the wedding. And I also did one small change. I managed to take a couple of photos that I believed were amazing and I just turned them to black and white. That's it. Did some prints on my P1000 from Canon and put it all into a little package for them and I and I took it over to their place and they looked at me and they said to me we thought you're going to take weeks for this I said no you don't have weeks and that's because of this I don't want to say it in that way I didn't say you don't have weeks I said you don't have enough time for waiting so I did a photo shoot with you guys with the ultimate system and Leica performed for me for a situation that I'll never forget and I would never have been able to pull this off with any other camera system so a call out to Leica thank you for creating such incredible German engineering with this camera system well done Leica well done You've now officially converted a photographer that's been in the industry for 40 years. Yes, I'm not a very lavish photographer that goes out there and spreads the word out that I've been there for 40 years and I haven't done fashion, uh, massive fashion shoots and I'm not one of those guys that is an ambassador to a brand. But if I ever had to become an ambassador, which is almost very close in Fuji system and I was very close to being an ambassador for Nikon, I wouldn't want to be an ambassador for any other manufacturer except Leica. I can proudly say today that if Leica ever had to come to me and say to me, would you like to be an ambassador for Leica in Wales in the UK? I would take on pounds on that opportunity, not because I'm a shill, not because I want to make money out of Leica or get free products. I don't need to. I can buy any camera system I want. I don't need to worry about money. What, I'm, what I care about in life is quality. I care about quality in everything that I do. I don't care about quantity. Quantity for me makes no sense. I'd rather have a few things and good things than have a lot of things and trash things. This camera system is not only small, versatile, powerful, exceptional quality, but it's also great to work with. It's gorgeous as a camera. It is a tiny little thing and it's stunning. It just works. Okay. And thank you. Leica for producing such incredible technology in a small little package. Now, I'm not going to blow the trumpet anymore for Leica because there are three things that I think the Leica needs to solve in this camera. First things first, Leica, this is a six grand camera. What you should do in a camera system like this is get rid of the SD slot or have the SD slot in there for the memory but internally provide a one terabyte m.2 or just in general a tiny small little drive and solid state drive specifically a one to two terabyte if you want to do the right thing you can get two terabytes of m.2 ssds which are that big tiny thin flat ssds what that would do is would take away the worry from professional photographers who do weddings specifically from worrying about the one camera uh, the one sd slot that you have i'm not i don't care about it because i know like i won't destroy my sd cards but even if that i use smaller sd cards so that i can quick and change them use them change them use them change them so i know i'm not going to lose my images and i know that your app your photo app that you have for Leica is the best app that I've ever used in the industry when it comes to photo 
app and camera interaction. It's, it's an unbelievable thing. So I can take photos with a camera and the photos go straight to my phone and that's my secondary backup. Immediately I can do that. So that's, that doesn't bother me as a professional photographer. I know how to replace my SD cards very effectively, very quickly, and I have a system that automatically updates and, and does a secure FTP upload to my servers immediately while I'm at a wedding. Because I'm a technology freak. I know how to do that without any camera system. Okay? I've designed specialized hardware to do that. Because that's what I use for my digital forensics hardware. Maybe one day I'll design a machine like that and sell it into the camera systems. So that's the first thing you'll solve. The second thing you'll solve with that internal SD system, the internal solid state drive, is the speed of this camera will get to such a stage that you will be able to not just do 8K video, but you will have to do, you'll be able to deal with the heating and the overheating, if there is any, with that 8K video. So instead of reducing that ability of 8K to like half an hour, you'll be able to go on forever. The other thing you'll be able to fix with this internal solid state drive is the fact that you can have internal storage to that level where the person can take the camera in their hands, go out shooting straight away without having to buy SD cards. That's huge. Okay? Absolutely huge. Now, the second thing that let me down, which, okay, it didn't let me down. I mean, I am a very big proponent that if I do videography, I don't like shooting with internal sound. I don't. I never have. And I always have an external mic system that I use on top of my cameras to do my audio. And I use Zoom recorders for that because I believe they're the best because they give me 392 kilo, um, um, kilohertz when it comes to sound. I don't, I don't need stupid quality like MP3 quality. I need wave production sound. So I've always shot with an external sort of sound system and that, that, you know, I can still use it on here. So that doesn't bother me. But I think what Leica you should do is do what Panasonic has done and what Sony has done. Come up with a contraption, which you know you can because you've got the hot shoe mount, which is an electronic mount for you, which has the hot points. Okay. Come up with an electronic shoe mount adapter like Sony and Panasonic have done, where someone can just plug it on the top. It doesn't have to be a very big one. It can be a smaller one. Plug it in at the top, and then basically that gives the ability for someone to put two XLR mic connections onto this. You do that, you're going to open up a Leica system to every videographer on this planet. Because this little camera system on a gimbal, with that little XLR adapter at the top Leica, will turn this camera into the beast of filming. The 8K quality out of this video is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Okay? Your 10-bit quality out of this is amazing. You put that XLR sound in this... You're going to make this camera the perfect system for videographers if you do that. So that's the second thing that needs improving on this camera. Just that. The third thing that I think, and this is more of a luxury thing. It's not really something that I would say is you should put it on every camera. I think it's just a luxury thing. I think personally... What could be amazing about this camera, even though you've got you've got a beautiful little system here where someone can use that to, you know, take photos on a lower angle. That's phenomenal. I think that's great. You know, that's fantastic. But I think if you made this little contraption door, not just do the tilting, but also tilting either upwards or slightly outwards, which is what Nikon has done with their least recent cameras and what Canon's been doing with everything. If you do that, That'll solidify this system into the ultimate package. And I mean the ultimate, as in you're going to go from 99% to 100%. So you're only missing 1% like a... I've never been able to say that to any camera manufacturer, that they're missing 1% of capabilities. Because everything else, I don't want you to touch. I mean, what you could do in the future with a Leica Q4 is you could bump this up from 60 megapixels to 100. And then you give somebody the ability not to just do a 90 millimeter crop. They can go to 120 millimeter crop, but then the lowest crop, which is 120, could be like an 18 or 24 millimeter. You pull that off on that camera, that's number four. You do that in this camera, then I don't think anyone else is going to buy anything else. And that's my experience of 40 years in photography. So, Leica. That's all I have to say when it comes to improving this. Um, you also don't need, really, you don't need this anymore because it's wonderful as it is, but you're blocking the ports underneath. That's a mistake. 
And also, this is not your manufacturing. This is from another organization. I think you guys need to rebrand a little bit better and make your own version of this. Do it in such a way that you only need one part of the camera to touch that particular little section. So you don't need to have the camera touching all sides of this, just the one side. And then basically when you do that, the mat can just be, you know, simple QI, whatever mat. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Otherwise, everyone, that's my little journey when it comes to the Leica Q system. I think this has been a tremendously important change for me because now I can carry this with one hand. I don't need to worry about anything else. I can produce photography with this that I never needed, but I always knew I wanted. And now that I have it, I can't believe I've done without it. And... I'm so thankful that I finally have moved over to the Leica system. Yes, at some point I'll probably go SL3, if not the Nikon system, for any other detached lens kind of system that I want. It might I might stick with Leica, it just depends on what Leica does for me when it comes to quality. But when it comes to pretty much my next five years of photography, this is going to be the Leica Q3. Because I know what I can do with this. And I'm going to do incredible photos and incredible video with this. And I don't have to worry about breaking my back. I don't have to worry about breaking my hands. I don't have to worry about my hand coordination anymore. I don't have to worry about my carrying of an enormous amount of gear. I can pretty much take this anywhere around my shoulders, around my neck and walk into an airplane. I don't have to worry about bags and bags of gear that I've been carrying. Who cares about all that stuff? Time has changed. People are more mobile. Technology has changed. Photography has changed. People are taking more photos with phones than they ever have with anything else. So why worry about, you know, carrying large gear? Take one of these smaller cameras. This is what we call a combination DSLR, mi mirrorless, micro four thirds, point and shoot, bridge camera, incredibly powerful quality imaging with this untouchable Sumilux F1.7, 28 millimeter. Untouchable quality. And don't even get me started with the black and white. Don't, don't, my favorite. Don't even get me started with black and white. Some future videos that I'm going to bring out will be of quality of these images. I will bring them out. Uh, I need more time to experiment with this camera. And um, I, yeah, I, it, it's a camera that pretty much anyone can use. So the, the question that I asked earlier in, the, you know, in this video is, is this camera for everyone? I believe that this camera is for anyone who's serious about photography and I also believe this camera can be for everyone. The price tag will hurt you, but the quality will make that disappear. If you're a brand new photographer, no, this probably isn't for you. If you're a seasonal photographer and you want to minimize your gear, minimize your kit, but still keep the quality, this is your camera. If you're a beginner and you're an enthusiast and you don't have a problem with money, then go ahead and get the camera. If you can get the stock for the camera, because it's highly unlikely that you're going to get stock for this, because this has been the most in-demand camera on the planet for the last year and a half, maybe 18 months. Um, but I want to only say this. If you ever get a Leica Q3 like this, I don't think you're going to ever need another camera ever again. I don't think you will. It's saying a lot. Maybe for the next 10 years, we probably won't need another camera. This will become the gold standard for Leica. Because it just does almost everything perfectly well. You see, camera systems that are out there. Olympus. Phenomenal quality lenses for the mirrorless system. Panasonic. Incredible video. XT from Fuji and the GFX system, the most fun cameras, second most fun I should say now, now that I've used the Leica system. Cam cameras that I think are so underrated, but I think have done an incredible job to be hybrid cameras. And the quality of the JPEGs from Fuji are second to none, okay? First would be Leica, no, hands down, when it comes to JPEGs, but I think the best after that would be Fuji. There's no doubt about it. The JPEGs out of, you know, Nikon and Canon and the rest of the Canyon manufacturer and, and the rest of the manufacturers are not right. They're not good. Fuji and Leica, basically, they're the leaders in JPEGs. And I like shooting raw, to be honest, because then I can really pull back any kind of colors that I need if I need them. 
But in all honesty, I think the way this camera Leica 3 is shooting, I honestly don't give a damn about raw photos anymore. Because it's that good, actually. <laughs> you know, there's a 60 megapixel, right, JPEG of this quality with a 14-bit color depth and the ability to not give a damn about saturation, shadows, exposure, highlights. That's crazy. Crazy, right? And Nikon for its superb skin tonality. And it is. I mean, even till today, I don't think anything can beat Nikon when it comes to portrait photography and skin tonality. Canon for its great color science and incredible capabilities for many years in leading the industry and videography. But now Canon, unfortunately, you, you drop the ball. You drop the ball. Sony for its incredible technology, its forward driving technology and its capable speeds that it can handle when it comes to their cameras. And let's face it, when it comes to autofocusing, Canon and, and Sony have always led the market. You know, Leica might be great, but it's not at the same level as Canon and Sony when it comes to autofocus. But I don't really give a damn about autofocus. I manually shoot video, manually focus on video. And when I take photos, I've got a pretty steady hand. So I don't give a damn about autofocus. And I've shot with film cameras most of my life. So it doesn't bother me really. I've used, I'm used to knowing what kind of settings I'd need to take the right shot without having to worry about increasing my shutter speed so that I can get that steady shot. I don't care about that. So at the end of the day, you know, I've used all the systems and then what did I land up with? Well, I ended up with a Leica Q system, which does everything. So moral of the story is very simple. Is this camera for everyone? I think it can be, but it's an expensive camera. If you first time in the market, I think for any professional who wants to take photography even more seriously and have a secret weapon in their bag that secret weapon without a without w w w might either be a fuji gfx 100s which is a relatively small camera system as a secret weapon for doing portraits and weddings and stuff like that or the like q3 system that would be the secret weapon in my opinion this would be a secret weapon in your arsenal of gear and as an everyday shooter, it's untouchable. I will carry this camera everywhere I go. And I travel the world with my work, my forensics work and my digital information security work. And that. I, I will travel the world when I come and, and I will take this camera everywhere I go. And now I don't have to take bags and bags and bags of gear. I can just take a tiny little, small little bag and have my battery and, you know, my SD cards. And I've got a flash, a Leica Q flash system that I've used. And... I don't need anything else because it's also USB-C charger. I mean, wow, you know, I do everything with USB-C anyway. So at the end of the day, I don't need anything else. And I am pretty happy with it. So if you want to travel easy, you want to have a simple system, a great system, an incredibly powerful system that can pretty much replace at least four to five lenses. It has a beautiful ultra wide, well, I'd say ultra wide, but wide lens, 28 millimeter, but it's f1.7. So there's 60 megapixels, 60 megapixels, which means if I now decide to crop down all the way down to 90 millimeter, I'm still going to get something that I can easily print on a P1000 and have a very large sort of A3, A2 size print, which is more than enough. I'm not going to print on a billboard. You know, if I wanted a billboard print, I'll go to the Canon R3s. 24 megapixels and I'll just print one of those or more importantly because it's not about pixels people when it comes to printing logic it's about light capture or I would rather if I was going to print billboards I'll go to the GFX 100s I mean nothing will touch that when it comes to quality and medium format apart from the Hasselbloods but if you want to have something that's as close to everything out there but almost beats everything out there in every aspect with the exception of audio and the exception of possibly an internal SD card, uh, an SD solid state drive. But you want to get 60 megapixels, f1.7, 20 millimeter all the way to 90 millimeter. And you want to have 60 megapixels that you can easily crop with. And you want to have the ultimate quality imaging. But easy to hold and easy to carry and, well, looks great as well. How are you going to beat the Leica Q3.
that's all I have to say, everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to me. That's been my roadmap. And I am finally now, 40 years later, in my photography, the type of shooter that I've always wanted to be in photography and video. I've always wanted a Leica system since the day my mother first showed me a Leica system in her film photography. And now that the mirrorless system, and by the way, Leica was the first ever mirrorless system that ever came out before Canon and Nikon and everybody else. So they've got a head start when it comes to mirrorless. No need for the shutters. So that has Leica going for itself as well. And the ability to do black and white photography and the ability to also just be able to walk around with this camera and not worry about, you know, how much gear I've got to carry and not compromise. No compromise in video makes me have a camera system that gets out of my way and lets my eyes do everything that they need to do when it comes to taking the photos. Because ultimately, the best photographer in you is what your eye can see. The second part is the lens, and the third part is the camera. So, before your eye can see anything, it's all about light and shadows. Once you get that right, then it's about training your eye to take good photos, the right photos. And sometimes you can break the rules when it comes to rule of thirds and that, but... The third, well, the thing after that would be the lens of the camera, because let's face it, cameras can come and go, but lenses will always be there. And lenses are what makes the camera shot come out the right way for you. The sensor, yes, sensor is always wonderful, but sensors can come and go. And then the camera system with, with its easy menus and whatever really makes it a pleasure to use. And ultimately, the quality of the photos is what you're interested in. And this has it in bucket spades, buckets and spades full of imaging. So like a cue, thank you very much. And thank you everyone for listening to my video. My name is Demetrius. I'm from OB Pixel. And today coming to you from obphoto.com, as you can see on the screen. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm a young YouTuber trying to build this channel so that I can not only make videos for creative work, but also my technology videos. And at the same time, make this YouTube channel fund itself with YouTube making it monetized, which I'm not monetized yet, and giving me the ability to have more time to put into this channel so that I can make incredibly good videos for you, for the person who's listening to me and watching my videos. Because I'm an honest person, because I don't just talk about a system, I put my money where my mouth is. And at the same time, there's so many other YouTubers out there and I'm not going to go and compete against other people when it comes to reviews. I'm going to just show you what these things can do. So in my future videos, I'll show you in the market, in the industry, what can happen and what can be done with these kind of cameras. That's the point of these videos. But more importantly, I'm going to show you about the usage of something, not about the reviews and the technical details behind that. If you want me to bore you with those details, I can, but I don't need to. I think the camera speaks for itself. For itself. But... Thank you for your time and I'm signing out.